Well, gardening friends, this year I've met hundreds of new gardeners, more than hundreds really, maybe a thousand, I don't know. And um, these new gardeners are growing vegetables. There are a lot of good reasons to be growing vegetables these days. We never know what's going to happen to our food supply, and we can buffer it a little bit at least by growing vegetables, kind of like the old Victory Gardens. I like to call it a prosperity garden. So you're going out there with your new transplants right now, and you're putting them into the garden, and some of you have already planted. Well, there are some problems we're going to run into, so expect some problems in the garden. Not everybody will have them. But one of the ones that I run into probably more frequently than many of the insect problems during the season is blossom end rot on tomatoes. Now this has to do with the water in the soil fluctuating quite a bit, getting very dry and then real moist again. And so this uneven watering is what leads to this problem. It has a lot to do with the calcium in the soil and the movement of calcium into a stressed plant puts it into the foliage and not the fruit and the fruit needs it. So this stressing of going back and forth with the watering kind of throws the calcium out of balance. And so what happens? We get on the bottom of the fruit this soft brown spot and uh, that's the blossom end rot right there. If it gets a lesion in it, then some organisms get in there and it begins to rot. And so it's called blossom end rot. Well, you've got to manage this. And one of the best ways of doing this is to put a nice mulch on there. I like to use a pine straw mulch and, um, because later on in the season it works into the bed better than some of the hardwood mulches. So I'll use the pine straw out there. And so this will keep the moisture even in the soil, thus eliminating or certainly reducing this problem. A plant going in early and getting stressed may lead to this problem. So this whole cycle of planting uh, is very important. Eggplants also get involved in this. Uh, of course, the tomato is the, the big culprit. You'll see it on peppers and also uh, some squash and watermelons. So this is something to be looking forward to in the garden unless you keep some even moisture out there. That's really, really important. Another problem that you might run into would be the squash vine borer. This is an ugly little creature that really can destroy the squash plant. But you take a knife, you open up the stem where it is, and remove this little critter. Now one of the things that we like to do to prevent it is we build these hoop houses over the garden. And then we can put a screen on top of that. It's uh, available in nurseries. It's a very lightweight screen. And that keeps the moth out of there that lays the eggs. We'll also use our white fabric that we use in the winter time. But the key to this success is the bees need to pollinate the squash. So every day in the morning or in the evening, you need to open it up a little bit and allow the bees to get in there and do the pollinating for you. But it really does work. It does keep the squash vine borers off of there while that major first crop comes in. During the second crop, which I call the bee crop, um, it may occur, and that's when you'd be looking for it. So another one of the problems that's out there is if you're growing corn, it's the corn earworm borer. And this guy gets into the top of the corn. Organic gardeners are used to this, and we just cut the top of the corn off. But if you're surprised by this worm in there, you might prevent it by taking a little bit of the BT, the caterpillar killer, and in squirting it into the top. I like to use an eyedropper and squirt it into the top of the corn, and that will get rid of the corn borer right away. There are some other things that you might find out there, like spider mites. This little guy causes the leaves on many plants to get kind of mottled with yellow spots and the spider mite can be washed off of there. The other thing that you can do is use some seaweed in your sprayer and wash it off. If you do it once a week, you'll really reduce the spider mite problem. And so um, aphids are another one of these problems, but beneficial insects will do the job at uh, managing these aphids. Now you want to make sure that you've got some ladybugs out there. And we recognize the ladybug. She's the poster child of the organic gardener. But at the juvenile stage, most of us don't recognize her. We may even think it's a harmful insect because it's next to the aphids. Well, these little guys are now doing their job better than the mature ladybug, and they're eating all of the aphids that are on the plant. So these are some of the kinds of things that you might be looking for this season. Maybe a fungicide out there for some of the foliar diseases that occur. Certainly use that seaweed to control spider mites and to nourish the plants and make them much more vigorous. And then there are some natural insecticides. If things are really out of balance and there's no beneficial insects there, then you might have to call on one of these. I like to avoid these, but 
Sometimes it's necessary in that new garden. So for you new gardeners, you'll find some problems along the way. It may affect production, but I just showed you some great ways of managing these types of problems. For Backyard Basics, I'm John Dromgul. I'll see you next time.